Hello and welcome to the Women's Health Theme. Today we're going to be talking about labour or as it's fancy medical term is parturition. So before we begin just a little test to see what you already know about labour. So question one, how many stages of labour are there? Is it A3, B4, C5 or D6? And can you name any of them? Have a little think. So the answer is A3. There are three stages of labour, dilation, expulsion and the delivery of the placenta. Question two, what, what cervical dilation is a woman in active labour? Is it A6, B10, C3 or D8? So the measurements are in centimetres in case you've forgotten. And the answer is C3. So the active phase of labour begins when the cervix is 3 centimetres dilated. And question three, which term describes a first pregnancy? Is it A, multiparous, B, gravity, C, postpartum or D, primiparous? And can you define all of these terms uh, if it came up in an MCQ? So the answer is primiparous. Primiparous is first pregnancy, multiparous is any subsequent pregnancies. Gravity means the number of times a person has been pregnant and postpartum is after someone's given birth. So today we're going to be talking about what is parturition, um, symptoms and history, the investigations of differential diagnosis, diagnoses, clinical examinations, some OSCE tips around labour and parturition, and then some summary and some questions to test your understanding. So what is parturition? So it's a process by which the fetus and the placenta are expelled from the uterus, which usually because occurs between 37 and 42 weeks. It's diagnosed when painful uterine contractions accompany dilation and effacement of the cervix. So it occurs in three stages, the dilation, which can be split into latent and active, expulsion of the fetus, and then delivery of the placenta. And in first pregnancies, the process lasts around 18 hours, and then previous um, subsequent pregnancies, the um, labour process is a lot shorter. So it's stage one, dilation. Dilation occurs in two phases, two phases, the latent phase and the active phase. So the latent phase is 0 to 3 centimetres dilation, so there's irregular contractions every 5 to 30 minutes lasting about 30 seconds and the cervical effacement is complete, so that's where the cervix um, goes from being long and thin to short and narrow, short and fat basically. And then there's an active phase where the cervix is between 4 and 10 centimetres dilated, there's regular contractions that last every 3 to 5 minutes and um, uh, sorry, every three to five minutes, and they last around a minute or longer. So the average centimetre dilation in the active phase is around one centimetre an hour. In nulliparous women, so women who have not had, um, or not given birth before, and around two centimetres in multiparous women. So this phase of labour should ar last around between two and six hours. So assessment of the mother and fetus during this time. So the mother, we do observations like temperature and blood pressure every four hour like, pulse, urine, contraction frequency, so we need to know like how strong they are, how long they are and how frequent they're occurring. And we need to assess the cervix, so we need to um, see if it's a become a face, position of the baby and so how dilated you are. And amniotic fluids, see if the membranes are intact if they've not already ruptured. So we assess the fetus as well, so we assess the fetus for position, presentation and engagement. We assess the fetus's heart rate, we um, do external fetal monitoring, so CTG, which you'll see um, when you're on the labour ward, and fetal scalp blood sampling in case you need it. So that's an example of how we measure um, the progression of labour. Stages two and three, so expulsion of the fetus and delivery of the placenta. So stage two is divided into act the active and passive stages. So the passive stage lasts for a few minutes, but it can be longer. The active stage lasts for an average of 40 minutes or 20 minutes in multiparous women. And the active stage ends when the fetus is delivered. And then stage three is the time from the delivery of the fetus to the delivery of the placenta. It lasts around 15 minutes and the normal blood loss is 500 mils. That's in a normal vaginal delivery. It's a little bit higher for a C-section, but obviously we're not talking about that. We're talking about normal vaginal deliveries. Okay, and for assessment of the mother and fetus in stages two and three, full dilation of the cervix is confirmed by a vaginal examination if you cannot see the head of the fetus. And you will do a valsalval remover, so women will get an expulsion reflex with each contraction, so they will take a deep breath, hold it and strain down, and that's what's known as when women say they want to push, that's what they mean. 
So the mechanism of labour, talk a little bit more in depth about that. So there's engagement where the head normally en enters the pelvis in the occipital, occipital transverse position. This happens because the transverse diameter is the greatest. Then we have descent. So this occurs during an active phase of the second stage of labour. The descent is helped by the voluntary use of abdominal muscles and the vasalval maneuver. Maneuver, I mean. Flexion. As the head descends it into the narrower cavity, flexion should occur as the cervix dilates. Then we have internal rotation. So when the um, fetus gets to the levator ani muscles, the head will rotate anteriorly by 90 degrees so that the sagittal suture lies in the AP diameter of the pelvic outlet, then the in the perineum, and then it descends. And then we have extension. So after the completion of internal rotation, the occiput is underneath the pubic symphysis, um, and then the head extends and the occiput distends um, out the vulva, which is known as crowning. And then you get the face and the chin born. And then restitution. So all of that is delivered the head, so the head is now born. Then restitution, which occurs as the head delivers, it aligns itself with the shoulder. So the baby's head twists as it's born. Um, and it, so it, to align with the shoulders, um, as it, which have just entered the pelvis in the oblique position. And then external rotation. So the shoulder will rotate into the AP plane. The occiput rotates through a further eighth to the transverse position. And then we get delivery of the shoulders and then hopefully soon after delivery of the rest of the baby. Like this. And then, so fetal changes after birth. Um, so the gas exchange takes place in the baby's lungs. So the lung liquid is squeezed out of the thorax during vaginal delivery. So the baby takes its first gasp. So there's an air-liquid interface which moves rapidly down the lungs and the blood supply to the lungs increases dramatically. The central circulation is switched off because obviously the, we all know that cords are cut during, after birth. And the fetal heart shunts become closed. So if you can remember, think back to like first and second year of physiology, think about the fetal heart and um, different types of fetal circulation, how it differs from normal circulation. So they become closed off after birth. So the pressure in the atria causes the frame of valley to close, prostaglandins cause the ductus arteriosus to close, and the ductus venosus closes within minutes of birth, but it can take up to a week sometimes. Okay. Okay, so. After a baby's been born, you use this thing called the APGAR score um, to assess how well the baby's been doing. So, it's a tool used to measure the physical condition of a newborn infant, and it's normally recorded at one minute past an infant being born and five minutes after the infant's been born. So, each of the letters in the score system stand for something specific. So, A is for appearance, so we look at central trunk colour. P is for pulse rate, so we see if it's absent, if it's more or less than 100 beats per minute. G stands for grimace, so in response to stimulation, so the baby will either won't have one, it'll grimace or it'll cry and cough. A stands for activity, so the muscle tone in the limbs, is it moving its little muscles and little limbs? So it's either limp, there's some flexion, or it's well flexed active movement. Like if you think about how the babies you've seen, think how most of them have their limbs like up, you know, their arms tight, their legs bent. And R stands for respiratory effort, so it's either absent, gasping or irregular, or regular, and without a strong cry. So yeah, we use this to assess um, if a baby needs a little extra help, if it maybe needs to go to the neonatal intensive care unit, etc. Okay, so in summary, I know I've talked quite fast through a lot of information, but hopefully a lot of it should be a revision for you. So we're just going to test some questions to see exactly what you've learned. So question one, what is the third phase of labour? Is it A, delivery of the placenta, B, latent dilation, C, expulsion of the fetus, or D, active dilatation? And can you name all three stages of the labour? That'll probably help you answer what the third stage is. So it's A, it's delivery of the placenta. It's important not to forget stage three, delivery of the placenta, which can easily be done when there's all the excitement around the baby being delivered, is it a boy, is it a girl, like all the family members that are present in the room probably want to see it. Um, but it is important because a lot of the complications of labour happen because this third, this third stage of labour isn't managed appropriately and struggle to, they struggle to deliver the uterus. Question two, how often should a mother be monitored in the first stage of labour? Is it A, three hours, B, two hours, or D, every half an hour? So... 
Think about how long the first stage of labour is. So the woman should be monitored every four hours in the first stage of labour. Obviously the first stage of labour is arguably the longest as it um as the cervix dilates. Um, can be up to 18 hours, especially in nulliparous women. And finally, question three, what does the G stand for, stand for in the APGAR score? The A growth, B grunting, C gas, or D growth? And can you figure out what the other letters stand for in the APGAR score? And the answer is D grimace. So it's appearance, pulse, grimace, activity, and respiratory effort that are all monitored. Okay, so thank you for watching today. I hope you've learned a little bit about labour. If you have any other questions about the women's health theme, check out the other videos on the website. But again, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.